Hey everybody, welcome back live from uh, Anaheim. Okay, where this uh, uh, Disneyland is the COVID vaccination destination for everybody around here. I've got Sonic <laughs> here. Uh, the algorithms will give us more views just by having him on for a little bit. So that's our thumbnail. I've got Chris. Yes, you can go, Sonic. Go. <laughs> I've got Chris Auber. Well, this is an emergency podcast. Hello. We're laid back, but this is an emergency, guys. Okay. Like we're petting emergency. puppies. We're petting puppies and going on Disneyland Ferris wheel, but it's an emergency podcast. Emergency. Okay. We had a fan, another fan. Okay. Our, our super fan, Igor Kaspin. Okay. Who works on Wall Street. I mean, he's like a mover and shaker in the industry. Uh, he talks about NWBO. And he hears things from people in the know that they're about to break out. So I have Monica Quitiva here, the one and only world famous one also. And world then famous. I've got Chris Sauber, <laughs> world famous Monica Quitiva is going to be the host. So I'm changing you to host Monica and then world famous Chris Sauber too. Uh, uh, although to a lesser extent of Monica, I mean, Monica's is yeah. the world famous. Not world famous at all. And Chris is interested <laughs> in these stocks too. So this is an emergency pod. And nor okay, so NWBO for those that don't know is Northwest Biotherapeutics. Yes. Yeah, Northwest. So what study is this one? Uh, these are people who screen failed the first study. Now they're allowed to join mm -hmm. this next study. So it's like open label biologic. Um, uh, patients will receive therapy per investigator discretion or standard of care as well as the vaccine. Um, Patients who are being screened under the other protocol, which ended, um, but were not eligible. Uh, or uh, So this is uh, an expanded access protocol for the treatment of glioblastoma multiform in patients with already manufactured DC vax L autologous dendritic cells pulsed with tumor lysate antigen who have screen failed the previous protocol. So this is the one where they're letting them basically uh, open label open label study yes. for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So this company has, uh, well, this is this was in October. That was the latest great news that they uh, released. So that was when they uh, closed the data, locked the database. That was back in October. Database locked. And, mm -hmm. and we know very well what that means. That means that they bug the coordinators with the queries until they can <laughs> uh, gather all the data. It's final now, at least for that portion. And then they look, so it's like interim data analysis, basically. It's a stressful exactly. point for everybody in, in the industry. Even investors the CRAs. Included. Even investors. CRAs, yeah. Investors do. They want those yeah. queries answered quickly. They want to know if they're wasting their money on this particular drug. So this <laughs> reminds me a lot of when we analyzed Biogen. And uh, we thought, okay, they're doing an open label, lots of patients in that study. Now, this was, it's hard to compare because this is a rare disease. And what Biogen did was Alzheimer's. So that was like 8,000 patients. This is probably going to be like 50 patients probably. Uh, but still, doing open label studies, unless the FDA is requiring extra data, uh, is usually a good sign from the, from the company. But as in the case of Biogen, it actually wasn't. But Biogen's a big enough company to where they can, they can kind of invest that kind of money. The, a company like Northwest Biotherapeutics not so much necessarily. So we can go back and look at the uh, clinicaltrials.gov and see what's the um, enrollment projections. 99. Just... 99 patients. 99, okay. okay. They're very uh, optimistic about the results of this uh, vaccine. It was phase, obviously it was phase three, and now they have the extension. Uh, they need 99 patients for the extension. And uh, this is the pipeline that they have right now. They currently have. Yeah, also so, under, so the DC Vax dendritic cell-based vaccine, also under development for inoperable solid tumor cancer, and have completed a 40-subject phase one trial preparing phase two trials. So two things in the pipeline, two indications in the pipeline, brain cancer, which is the one we're looking at now, and metastatic uh, ovarian cancer phase one is complete. Uh, okay. Okay. And also yes, solid yes. inoperable tumors have completed a 40 subject phase one. Yeah, that's another thing that I uh, heard through the rumblings that 
this study has been going on for like 10 years. Um, this one is the expanded access 2014. The previous study, so the 21, whatever, I think has been going on since like 2010 or 2011. It's yeah. like a 10 year study. So I don't know if this matters, but Googling DC Vax results, here's what you get. The newly diagnosed patients who received DC Vax in addition to standard of care treatment typically did not have tumor reoccurrence for a median of approximately two years, more than triple the usual time with standard of care treatments. And they survived for a median of approximately three years, about two and a half times the usual. Okay. Wow. We can't offer much more insights than what's already publicly available other than looking at clinicaltrials.gov, which is publicly available also, but uh, we actually deal with clinicaltrials.gov every day. And not many people probably think of looking at clinicaltrials.gov for financial advice. Oh, come. Primary, the oh, primary come. objective is to compare the progression-free survival from time of randomization between patients treated with DCVAX and control patients. Time to tumor progression or death. Yeah, so it's a vaccine for tumor progression. Mm -hmm. uh, the secondary objective is to compare overall survival and time to disease progression mm -hmm. between D. So it's it, that's what the vaccine is for. Basically, it's just like breast cancer. You know, the recurrence uh, is in any cancer. You know, the re recurrence is the or progression biggest issue. Progression of disease or recurrence, right? So. Mm -hmm. And brain cancer is no different. And um, they're actually trying to develop a vaccine for breast cancer too. Is there a vaccine for breast cancer? There aren't any breast cancer vaccines available, but if you are in clinical trials, a vaccine called NuVax is furthest along in the research. N-E-U-V-A-X. <laughs> Stock SLS, symbol SLS. So was uh -huh. that, it popped to eight, some, what did it pop to? Like almost $20. In, what was uh, it before that? The low. December. Like, like a week before, 267. Two bucks, three bucks. What did it go up to 20? What was the news? Go back to the news to December. See underneath. A completed, completed. So so completed. The first one is completed. Breast cancer combination immunotherapy with Herceptin and H2 wow. has results. So let's see what's Rick the result. Summary. Study results. Can you click on that? Go up. Click on the study results right there. Percent survival 86.7 wow. in the. Um, Vaccine versus 80. So a 6% increase in survival. Okay. What about the secondary outcomes? Let's see. Cardiac toxicity. Uh, it's the, the same. So no cardiac, no cardiac uh, toxicity. 86.7 versus 80.8. Is that enough of an increase in survivability to warrant continuing? I would say so. If there's no, there's, you saw the cardiac effects were the same for both. So, well, why I'm asking is because, like, you know, we specialize in CNS and for depression, I don't think that would be enough to continue. There's not enough of a differentiation between current treatments and this test, this, you know, the IP right. to further continue with research. I don't think that's enough. But they're an outlier. in depression, they're measuring like percent of improvement in like the madras, for example. This is like sure. people that sure. die or live. I understand all of that. I'm just wondering if that's enough of a differentiation. So uh, when, when did that study end? Do you do you know when that study ended? Yeah. December, December 2020. Well, that was when it was last updated. That doesn't necessarily mean... No, it says results first posted December 2nd. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, recruitment status was first posted in April 2012. So... Um, yeah, three-year study plus probably three more years to get all the numbers. Recruitment. Six, seven years by the time they analyze the results another year. So, yeah, makes sense. We're early on this, guys. We're early. That was December. So that was after the stock popped and dumped. All right. So I think that pump and dump had nothing to do with the fundamentals. But that was a yeah. really quick pump and dump. That Literally two days, it looked like on the chart. Right. So I wonder if there's just those good articles, you know, what's yeah. going on? Because uh, a vaccine, if these are the furthest along vaccine for breast cancer, whoever can get that vaccine for breast cancer is going to make a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. Because that's very common, breast cancer. That's right. There, and we'll there, yeah. this. About one in eight U.S. women, 12% will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime in 2020. 
276,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women, along with 48,000 new cases of non-invasive uh, breast cancer.